All right, all right. Welcome back. Uh, what you see before you is the carnage left over from my uh, electricery, the first stage of my tank's electricery. Um, because there's, <laughs> there's a, I want a little, uh, I want a little DIY mad. I think I'm a DIY addict. I need, I might need some help. Anyway, uh, let's let's take a quick peek at what's been built so far and then um yeah you can you can see what's going on uh one second all right so this is the result of all that mess that i just showed you this is phase one of the 140 tank aquarium controller uh phase one because this has just got the basic functionality for setting up the tank right away i don't need any super bells and whistles yet and honestly, I don't need them, you know, maybe for, for quite a while. So I've just built a controller that can do uh, your, your simple basic stuff. And that is, uh, so I've got float switches, and I've got temperature sensor, and I've got two power bricks uh, that have controlled outlets. And uh, all of that is controlled by a computer, just like all the other aquarium controllers out there. There is a computer, and this one it is and it's called the Brain Box. So it's Brain Box, Connection Box, Power Bricks, Sensors. That's kind of how the system works. Those are the pieces of the puzzle. So the Brain is a Raspberry Pi. Uh, that I'm using a Model 0W, W meaning Wi-Fi. I connect to it with basically any device that has network connection and a web browser. Uh, that's all you need to uh, manipulate the software, check the, you know, the graphs and the data of what's been happening with your tank. That's the information that it's been saving. So the the all Raspberry Pis have these these banks of pins. Uh, these banks of pins have kind of three things going on. Uh, well, four. Uh, they have Electricity, 3 volt, 5 volt, and ground to run your sensors. And they have GPIO pins, which uh, get information from your sensors. So a float switch is, is essentially a sensor, an input. Uh, your, your temperature monitor there, that is a sensor. That's an actual sensor. Uh, so switches, sensors, inputs. And then it has pins that control outputs. So there are relays in these boxes. There's eight mechanical in this one. There's three solid state in this one, and then those five are just regular on. Those relays are controlled by output signals from GPIO pins. There are 26 pins on here I can use. And then there's also a, a pin for PWM signal. Uh, so that will allow me to control LEDs, uh, LED dimming, which will come down the road. I will be adding LED functionality to the Pi when I build my uh, very extensive LED plan. Uh, I have never seen the idea that I'm going to be doing. Hopefully it works. If it does, it may change how some people like their, their aquariums. I think it'll be kind of cool and pretty excited about that, but that's, that's months down the road. Uh, and this box over here, so this is just, that's what I call my inputs connection box. So I see it's got two kind of rails of pins there. Uh, one is 3.3 volts, one is 5 volts, because there's not many uh, voltage pins on the Pi, and you can have a lot of sensors. The sensors don't take a lot of, a lot of current, so I just needed some more, uh, more connections. So the sensor wires will come into here. They all have six feet of wire, pretty much, come into here, connect to the appropriate power, and then the uh, input pin comes over into the brain box. And then the brain box, when it gets information from this stuff, it does stuff like, you know, say the say this the heater, the temperature sensor says the water's too hot. Uh, say the heater failed. When they fail, they usually fail on. Uh, it says it's too hot. Tells the outlets then to shut off the ones that are connected with heaters, and that's all done in the software and the programming. Very simple to do. I, I will show people how to do that. Essentially, if you can, if you can write an email, clip some wires, and do some very basic soldering, you could do this. This is this is very simple and easy. Um, 
here are, you know, almost the hardest thing you're going to do is make these wires. <laughs> like it's just, it's, it's so easy. These wires are, it's very easy to solder wires together. Uh, these wires go from the relays in the box. They come into here, they connect to the pins. And then they also have, uh, the power banks also have a plug. I've got three pronged extension cord here that plugs to the wall. One of these plugs in here, one of these plugs in here, and then this this power supply for the uh, Pi also plugs in here. So that's that's the system. Now, why did I do this as opposed to buying a Neptune or a Digital Aquatics or one of the new Chinese uh, controllers? One is price. <laughs> like to buy this functionality from one of those options, I'd be looking at probably around a thousand bucks Canadian to make this functionality with exactly what you see here under a hundred bucks. So this is nice and affordable. You also get to control everything. Your imagination is, is the only thing really holding you back here. Uh, time, effort, that kind of stuff. Uh, the, I will be putting cameras connected to this pH, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, this, this is pretty reasonable and expandable and fun. It's a, a part of the fun for me. Um, and it's so cheap that I could actually have another one of these complete package sitting on a shelf just in case everything breaks down. So like the one good thing about controllers is it adds safety to your system. So it adds redundancy and safety to your entire system. It allows you to do things to your tank remedy problems when you're not around. That's the big thing with an aquarium controller is it adds a massive amount of stability and peace of mind to your system. But what happens if your controller goes? So, you know, I've, I've seen a bunch of threads and stuff where, you know, tanks have died and crashed because their controller went, right? Uh, say the doser that connect, and well, yeah, I'll be adding a doser to this as well. Uh, say the doser goes on a controller and floods your tank with alkalinity or something like that. Um, you, you know, you can maybe fix it with some water changes, but then you're sitting there uh, with a broken aquarium controller until you send it away. Maybe it's under warranty, maybe it's not. It gets fixed, gets sent back. You know, that could cost 100, 200 bucks maybe to get it fixed, or maybe you have to end up buying a whole new one. This one, you got a $14 Raspberry Pi sitting on yourself preloaded with your software. Raspberry Pi just dies on you. You unplug it, you throw in a new one, recycle the old one, 14 bucks. You're not, your bank's not broken and you're ready to go in no time. So there are some benefits to uh, putting in some time and effort into one of these. This is the actual board that the controller will be sitting on in the sump. I just gotta paint it, put some holes in it for some wire management. Uh, that'll be that'll be coming once I do some other stuff. I have tested the system, uh, so the build videos for the system will be coming out very soon. I just got to edit them together because they're in a bunch of different pieces. And so if you're interested, you can watch the videos and maybe if you want, make your own. Uh, it's pretty, pretty easy to do. That's it. Later.